in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to take a set of pre-made toolpaths based on our Vectric widget and array copy them so that we can make more than one copy of the same toolpath using different tools. And then we'll take a different set of vectors with different toolpaths using the same tool and create an optimized toolpath in which we have controlled the way that the toolpaths are being executed. But for now, to start this demonstration, let's go to File and Close so we can open up one of our uh, pre-existing files. Okay, so let's start off by opening an existing file. So we come up to Open an Existing File and navigate to our Array Copy Emerging Toolpath Guide Files folder and we want to choose the Vectric Widgets uh, Toolpath CRV file. So just open that up. And now you may be familiar with this file. You may have seen this in some of our other tutorials, but for now let's go over some of our layer information about these vectors. So if we come up to our Layers tab, and you'll see we have five separate layers, and each of these are associated with some vectors, and each of these layers are also associated with a toolpath, and we'll look at that in just a moment. But for now, let's have a look at our vectors. So if I just click on the light bulb uh, symbol over here, you can see it turns off the vector for the cutout, and we have our slots, our drill holes, our text, and finally, our crosshatch. So for the moment, let's click out of that and let's have a look at the associated toolpath files for this widget. Okay, so as you can see, we're now in our toolpath menu and we have five toolpaths, each of them associated with vectors on particular layers. So for example, let's have a look at our profile cutout for the moment. We wanna make sure our show advanced toolpath options are on. So we've got that box checked at the top here and we've come down to the bottom, we've got our vector selection. So let's click on selector. Now notice there's various parameters you can choose from here. And for this particular toolpath, we have our profile cutout toolpath set to have uh, selected the layers uh, or the vectors on the cutout layer only, any of the open vectors on that layer, the close vectors on that layer, and to associate that with this toolpath. So what that means is it's taken all these parameters and associated anything on this layer, any vectors on this layer to this toolpath. So let's just close that out. And let's just close this out for the moment as well. And you can see if we go on to another one, for example, our profile crosshatch, and we go to our selector again, uh, the same is true of this, where we have any of these parameters we'll be applying uh, to this toolpath for any vectors on this layer, as this is the one selected. So let's just close that out, and let's have a look at the preview for what the actual final cut may look like. Okay, so to actually look at the preview, let's come up to our preview toolpaths uh, tool and just click on that. And we're just gonna click on preview all toolpaths. Now, as you may notice, it's actually going through the toolpaths in order. So it's doing the profile cutout first, the pocket slots, the drill holes, the profile crosshatch, and the profile text. And you'll see this, if you pay close attention, that each of these boxes will be checked as it's running the toolpath in real time over here on the screen. Now, it's also important to note that for the top three Toolpaths here, so for the profile, the pocket, and the drill, it's using the same end mill. And for the bottom uh, two toolpaths for the profile crosshatch and the profile text, it's actually using the same VBit tool as well. Okay, so let's say you would like to make a sheet of these instead of just having one singular widget here that we've got at the moment. Well, to do that, let's have a look at making our workspace larger. So let's just close our toolpath preview and let's go back over to our drawing tab, and we're gonna come up to our uh, job dimensions under the file operations, click on that. And we're gonna make the job size a lot larger. So we're gonna go for a width of 96, and we're gonna go for a height of 48. But we're gonna leave the rest of the settings alone. So let's click OK. And let's look at our 2D view now, and you'll notice now that the, the widget is now in the bottom left-hand corner of a much larger sheet. And we can actually see the whole sheet by clicking this button here, zoom active view to drawing limit. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so now with our widget in plain view, let's go back over to our toolpath menu and let's have a look at some of the array and copy options available to us. So if we come up, we want to select this uh, tool right here, the array copy toolpath tool, which is just underneath your delete toolpath and just above your create job sheet tool as well. So let's just click on that. And the moment you can see it says no toolpath, and that's because we haven't got any toolpath selected. So let's just click right here to check this toolpath box, which will uh, select all of our toolpaths. And you'll notice that it's now populated this box with our toolpath information, so with each toolpath name uh, written out 
with the tools associated with that toolpath uh, underneath it. So as you can see, as we said earlier, got the same end mill in each of the top three toolpaths and the same V-bit in the bottom two toolpaths. Okay, so let's have a look at the tool in a bit more depth. So as you can see, we've got various options here. We've got the amount of rows we would like, the columns we would like, the option to either offset from the bottom left-hand corner uh, copies, or we can use a gap methodology where it will use the values that we put in here to create that gap in X and Y respectively um, from the previous uh, toolpath or previous vector. So for example, if you imagine we've got this widget here, if we kept these uh, current values and we kept the gap option selected, it would then create another widget uh, four uh, inches away in X, four away in Y as well. But we're going to have a look at reducing those values in a moment, so don't need to worry about that just yet. And finally, we have the option to minimize our tool changes. So now let's have a look at actually creating an array copy toolpath. So I want to change the amount of rows to five. I want to change the amount of columns to 11 and I will change the values in X and Y to 1.5. Now I'm not going to actually use the offset because at the moment the widget is about seven and a half inches across. So what that means is if I use offset, this will actually offset the uh, copies from the bottom left hand corner. And eventually when it was done, it would start overlapping each other. So I want to use the gap option in this scenario. And for the moment, I'm not actually going to check the minimize tool changes option. And that's because for the moment, we're going to think that we're going to cut one of our widgets out, changing our tools as often as we like, or as often as we need to, uh, popping that piece out and finishing it off while it moves on to the next part so that we can finish that uh, first piece before the next one is done and so on and so on. So let's just go ahead and calculate. Okay, so as you can see in our 3D view now, that it's actually taken our first original toolpaths in the bottom left-hand corner here and copied them uh, using the parameters that we had set in the array and copied toolpath form. And you'll also notice if you come back over to your toolpaths menu over here, you've got a parent toolpath now with your previous toolpaths underneath that parent toolpath as well. So let's have a look at what this looks like when we preview the toolpath. So as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, what you can do here is it will cut one out, then it'll move on to the next one. So you can just pop this off and finish it if you need to while waiting for the next one to cut out. But for the moment, I'm just going to speed this toolpath up a bit so you can see what happens here quickly. And you can see now all these have been cut out on our sheet. Okay, and I think that looks pretty great. But what if you wanted to uh, cut these out with a minimal amount of tool changes? Well, we can have a look at addressing that. If we go back over to our toolpaths, and we're just going to double click on our parent toolpath here, the array toolpath one. And you'll notice it loads back in all the toolpath values, which are the exact same as before. But this time we're going to look at minimizing the tool changes. So what that means is it's now going to uh, make sure that any toolpaths that use the same tool will be run together. And then the same will occur for any um, tools that come after that. For, for example, in this scenario, we know that our profile car, our pocket slots, and our draw holes uh, use the same tool. So this can effectively run those toolpaths along the entire sheet and then move on to using the V bit to finish off the rest of the toolpaths on each of these widgets. Now, it's important to note at this stage before we calculate this that you need to have an automatic tool changer on your machine or if you are manually changing the tool, that your control software and your post processor uh, have the stop command in there so that you can change your tool when it comes time to change it uh, on the profile crosshatch toolpath, for example, where it changes from an M mill to a V bit. But with that said, I'm just going to check that box for minimize tool changes and make sure our toolpaths are selected so they will take effect and hit calculate. Now, before we actually preview this, I'm just going to slow the toolpath down a little bit so you can see what's happening. Okay, so let's just slow that down just a little bit. And I'm going to hit preview on all the toolpaths. And you'll see that now what's actually happening is it's doing the profile cutout, the pocket slots, and the drill holes, and then moving on to the next one and doing the same thing. Because what it's actually doing is making sure that it's cutting out all the toolpaths uh, for the sheet that require the same tool. So it's just going to 
use the end mill where it can, where it's, where it's required, which is the profile cutter, the pocket slots, and the drill holes. And then after each one of these is done and the sheet is full, it will then move on to the uh, V-bit tool, which is for our profile cross hatch and our profile text. So I'm just going to speed this, speed this up a little bit so you can see what's happening. So it's just going to go through these. And if I slow that back down again, you'll notice that one by one, it's going through and doing the cross hatches and the text. And again, I'll just speed this up so we can finish that off. Now, before we move forward, I thought I'd just show you our 2D view to explain what's going on here a little bit further. So if you look at our 2D view, you'll notice that the other uh, versions of our widget aren't actually on the page. And that's because it's not literally creating uh, the separate vectors for them over and over again. It is simply copying those tool paths and arranging them on our worksheet to make the best use of it in line with our parameters that we set, which is a 1.5 inch gap between each one. And it has done that here. So it's not actually physically recreating this vector over and over and over again. And it's just doing the toolpath uh, using the array copy toolpath. Now, if you wanted to make a change in one of your toolpaths, it's actually quite easy to do. So let's have a look at doing that. So if we go over to our profile cut, for example. Uh, so if we go into that, and let's say we didn't actually want to cut uh, down to the exact depth, but we wanted to go through it, we could go through the actual material itself. So if we go down to 0 0.376, I'm just going to hit calculate. You'll notice it gives us a warning because it tells us we're going to go through the material this time. So let's just click OK. Now what that's actually done is applied it to every single one of these. So again, you don't need to worry about changing the, uh, the tool pass that applies individually to all these. This will actually take effect with all of these. And I'll show you that now when I reset the preview, hit preview all tool pass, and there we are. And it's cut through the actual uh, material itself. And it's gone all the way through our material. So if I just pop that back into view, and there we are. Similarly, if you need to change anything with your vectors, any changes that you make to these vectors will actually apply across the board with your array copy tool pass. And that's because each of the vectors are associated with a specific layer, and those layers are associated with the toolpath. So if you changed anything here, let's say you change the size of these vectors here, for example, that would be reflected in your toolpath as well. So the tool is quite powerful in that it will take these changes into effect. Now at this stage, you could look at now saving out your toolpath, and I would refer you to the toolpath saving guide and how to do so, but it's important to note when you're going to go save your tool pass for this one to make sure that if you have multiple tools in use and if you've checked the uh, box here for uh, minimize tool changes that you need to have a post processor with the automatic tool change option available or a post processor that allows you to stop in between the different tool paths with different tools so you can actually change it manually. And it's also important to note that if say you didn't want these to be uh, grouped up anymore under this parent uh, toolpath, you can actually just go ahead and right click it and you can choose this option here to ungroup. And then what will happen is it will ungroup these toolpaths back onto their uh, original toolpaths. And if I reset this preview, I can show you that when I select these toolpaths, there's actually just the original toolpath that we had before in our original scenario. Okay, so with that said, we can now move on to the second part of this tutorial and we can just go ahead and click File and Close. Now, in this case, I'm not going to save the changes, but if you would like to, you may go ahead at this stage. Okay, so in the last demonstration, we showed you how to make multiple parts using an array copy tool path so that all the parts will be the exact same. But what if you wanted to use one tool and cut different parts with that same tool? but wanted to do it in a fashion that was easy for you to actually manufacture in a certain way. Well, that's where our merge toolpath uh, operations come into play. So if we go over to open an existing file, we're gonna click on the open an existing file option. And this time we're gonna choose the drink coasters file and we're just gonna click open. Now, as you can see, we've been presented with uh, eight square coasters and eight circular coasters. Okay, so if we come to our layers tab, you'll notice that we've got three individual layers all with their own toolpaths associated with them as well. So we've got a pockets layer represented in blue, if I turn that on and off. We've got our details represented in the mustard color, if we turn that on and off. And we've got our profile represented in red, and we just can turn that on and off as well. And as I said, they are associated with their own toolpaths. So if you pop over to the toolpath menu, you'll be able to see them. 
And as you can see, we've got a quarter inch end mill for each of these tool paths. And we are running it in this specific order. So we will be running it in the pocket first, the profile detail second, and the profile cutout last. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So first let's run the uh, pocket uh, tool pass. So if we just select that and click on preview visible tool pass. And we're just gonna speed that up just a little bit. And there we go. And then we can do the same for our profile detail. Let's just slow that down a little bit. And lastly, our profile cutout. So that's the order that we would like our tool pass to cut out in. But as you just saw, we couldn't actually move this from our table until we're done cutting all of our parts. So let's say you just wanted to do them one at a time so that you could remove the coasters at a safe and appropriate time and take them and do a little bit of finishing on them and then come back and get the next one. Well, to do that, we're going to need to use our merge tool pass uh, tool. So let's go ahead and close down this preview. So we just need to come up to our merge tool pass tool, which is just here, which is underneath the recalculate all tool pass option and the save tool path option. So let's click on that. And it's also next to the array tool path option, if that's easy for you to find. And as we can see, it says we have no tool pass selected. That's because we haven't clicked on our tool pass yet. So let's just turn these on. And as you'll see, it's now reflected all the tool pass that we have down here. And importantly, we haven't got any warning messages. Uh, because we're using the same tool. So perhaps if we were using a different tool, we need to take into account that obviously, you know, the merge toolpath would throw up a warning regarding the fact that you have a different tool uh, in your toolpath. So let's have a look at some of the options here. So we've got the ordering. So you can choose left to right, grid, bottom to top, shortest path. Important to note here that if you choose all of these options and check all of them, what the software will do is actually um, use the shortest rapid move um, to represent your preview for these uh, parts. And we can also merge by part, which is what we want to do because we want to uh, cut one part and then pop it off to go do some finishing while the other parts cut out. So for the moment, let's make sure we've got a name for our merge toolpath, which we'll just delete the one and call this merge toolpath. And we'll click on merge toolpath. And again, you'll notice we've now got this parent name for these toolpaths, but you'll see that it's actually just one toolpath that is encompassing all of these previous toolpaths together. Now, the software will still respect the order of these toolpaths. So it will still do the pocket first, then the detail, and then the cutout when it's actually doing the toolpath here. So when it's actually cutting it out, it will still respect this toolpath order. And it will do its best to try and go left to right based on the start points and other factors that are going on in our vector lines. So it's a good idea to watch your toolpath and understand where it's going. So to do that, I would perhaps turn the speed of your preview down just a little bit so you can see the toolpath running and you can see where it's going to go and then reset your preview. Make sure your toolpaths are selected and we're gonna hit preview visible toolpaths. So as you can see, it's gone to the bottom left-hand corner first, and it's doing all the ones on the left-hand side. And then eventually it'll make its way over to the right-hand side. So this is great because that means now we can pop this one off first. We can go ahead and do some finishing on it, then pop off this one, do the same again, until eventually we get our entire sheet finished. And that looks great. Now, if you want to make any changes to your merge toolpath or have a look at the options again, all you have to do is double-click on the text on the right here for your merge toolpath and it will open that menu back up again. Now, let's say for whatever reason we didn't want to preserve the order that we have, we can just uncheck the merge by part option and we can uh, merge the toolpaths again. And you'll notice we get this warning that says, warning, the resulting merge toolpath will not necessarily preserve the current toolpath order or the cutting order within an existing toolpath. Now, this is important to know because you're going to need to be sure that everything gets cut in a safe and appropriate manner for the tools that you're using in the material that you have and then make any adjustments accordingly. Okay, so let's just click OK for now and we're going to have a look at resetting our preview and seeing what our current toolpath uh, preview looks like. So make sure uh, toolpaths are selected again and let's just hit preview visible toolpaths. I'm just going to speed that up a little bit. 
Now, it may be important to use this technique depending on your manufacturing process that you have, so it's always great to experiment with this and see if you can come up with the most efficient way of cutting your parts. So let's just go ahead and close this down for now, and if for some reason you need to make a change to one of uh, these toolpaths that within this merge toolpath, that's really easy as well. So let's have a look at doing that. So let's have a look at adjusting our pocket toolpath, for example. So let's just double click on our pocket. And let's say we didn't want it to be 0.3 inches deep. We actually wanted it to be a quarter of an inch deep. So let's go for 0.25 and we're going to hit calculate. And now that's automatically applied that change to our merge toolpath. So we can just reset our preview and have a look at our new preview by hitting preview visible toolpath with our toolpath selected. And now what it's actually done is it's reflected that change for our toolpath there. So the pocket's not quite as deep, but the details are just a little bit deeper now. Okay, so let's just reset our view. Now, say if for some reason you decided that you didn't want these toolpaths to be merged anymore or didn't want them to group together anymore, you can actually just ungroup them. And you can do that by coming over and right-clicking on this merged toolpath here. Then you can choose this option here to ungroup and this will ungroup them back onto the original toolpaths and now they're no longer merged. And with that, that concludes our tutorial on the array copy toolpath and merging toolpath options. I hope it has been clear and you now have the confidence to understand the difference between the array copy toolpath and the merge toolpath options, and you can now effectively use them for your machining needs. And as always, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.